guys if you see what happens to me yesterday hey god this lagos will not kill me i said this lagos cannot kill me yesterday guys hey god i was so scared i was shaking i broke my fine china plate yesterday out of the fact that i was shaking guys i'm gonna gist you guys what happened i'm gonna gist you guys what i'm on about so you just need to watch till the end of this video because it's crazy what do they call it it's mad oh <laughs> it's metal but before i continue guys let me welcome you guys officially to my youtube channel you're welcome to practice speaking with glory my name is glory elijah so guys today hmm, i just want to thank god this is testimony time oh. i just want to thank god for the fact that i did not land in another police wahala hey god guys you know there's this thing that happens to you when you are in danger hmm? all your pressures your blood pressure rises up you are sweating but you are cold at the same time you catch pneumonia in few seconds and then when everything has now happened your eyes are cleared you now start thinking of it as if it happened in the past or you know like it was in a dream guys that was what happened to me yesterday i've mentioned on my channel during my youtube live saturday live stream several times that um i do a lot of hustles I also told you guys that um, one of the hustles that I do is I host apartments on Airbnb. If you don't know Airbnb, please Google it. Let me not waste my time and <laughs> your time. So I host, um, I help my friend to host his apartment on Airbnb. So guys, this hosting Wahala, not Wahala, but this hosting gig, it almost put me in trouble yesterday. And guys, you know where you stay on your own. I'm sorry, but I think I still I keep giving scenarios because guys, I'm still in shock. I'm still in shock, but I'm still amazed at how I was on my own and trouble came to come and look for me. And I'm asking myself, Glory, how did you miss the signs? How did you miss the signs? And guys, this is one thing I have to say to you before. Eh? When your body is doing you one kind, one kind, that something is not right, please just go with your instincts because sometimes your instincts can never be wrong and one thing about me is my instincts are never ever wrong never maybe okay maybe 90 percent of the time never wrong you know so last week i think on wednesday or thursday i got a call from someone um dude i'm gonna use pseudo names here i don't want to use the actual names in case those people are watching my channel so um i got a call from a particular guy let's say john and john said oh hi my name is john I got your number um, from someone that has stayed in your short -let apartment. I said, oh, okay. Now, the mistake I did not make, I made, was I did not ask which person. Because I usually have the contact of all the guests that I have hosted in that apartment. So, I'm like, oh, okay, great. And the person was like, okay, so um, I'm also a host. I am also an agent. So, I need an, um, an apartment, your two-bedroom apartment, to host my guests my guest um, wants to stay for one month and i'm like oh okay in my head i'm calculating wow that's a lot of money meaning a lot of commission so i said okay no problem what dates and the person said immediately and i'm like oh so that was the first sign i got that this whole deal was fishy so i'm like immediately i said okay sorry but normally we would we prefer people giving us at least 24 hours notice or even seven days notice of their booking so that if we have any other reservations you know during that time we know how to push it in and the guy said okay one month um but what will happen is is guests they won't be paid they won't pay at once they'll be paying every week so i'm like okay no it's not gonna work because i already have this particular lady who wants to celebrate her part a birthday party in that same apartment she has come to view it she has paid one week ahead so i told the guy that no that i already have somebody that was not like i oh, come on that um how much is one night that this person paid for that they are paying for one month and i'm like i know it's a lot of money but um my business has its integrity to hold you know i know that this lady's money is just one day you know it's not really much but even though regardless i mean she took all the pain to come all the way from where she was come and inspect the space she loved it you know so i just told the guy the guy and i said eh, i also shot let apartments too so um my clients can come and you know stay at yours for one month and then we can look for another space for this girl so me i've said ah okay oh well, you know what 
let me talk to the owner of the apartment about this you talk to your people if they can pay at once then we will look for another better space for the lady unfortunately my friend that owns the apartment he also has um like a cafe so we're like she can even use that space because she wants to host at least five people you know so it's just this scanty kind of birthday kind of dinner thing they wanted to do you know so i said okay she can use that space so this guy went and asked these people they said no they cannot pay at once and then i spoke with my friend that owns the apartment and he said no that that we should be careful that he does not understand why these people are just coming you know one month he wants to be paying every week and then he was having feelings about it and me too and then i said no we don't want so i went back to this john guy and i said sorry um we cannot do it we cannot break the deal we have with this lady even though she paid for one night this guy went he came back again another deal eh uh, sorry i have a client another client though the client wants to come and stay i said okay um where's the client when is the client coming see the client wants to check in now i'm like oga i have a life i have other deals like other businesses i take care of so um i'm sorry but you can't just be calling me immediately and you want me to get apartment prepared for you immediately i said please can you at least be giving me 24 hours notice normally it's seven days notice but at least give me 24 hours notice and then he's like okay i'm sorry but can you blah, blah, blah. i said okay we are your guests he said they're already at the apartment because at the initial stage where we talked okay he asked for the address and i said okay here's the address we can meet on the day you are ready and then he said oh there's no need my clients are already on their way to the apartment i said i don't understand how can you give them the address to the place i'm relating with you as the agent and you you know guys this is how we went back and forth and i told him i'm sorry the apartment is not available guys i don't know i think that this guy gave my number to his client his client now called me let's say his client's name is ayo ayo now called me hi and uh, my name is ayo i said yes hi ayo he said uh, um i i need an apartment to short let and i'm like okay and um, when do you need the apartment he said today today i said today um okay how many people are leaving he said eh just me eh, blah, blah 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 before i knew it eh okay um when you're ready we can do inspection he said okay i'm already at the apartment like what the hell how do you put just go to an apartment without even informing the host of the apartment or the owner like how do you put do things so i told this guy sorry the apartment is not available guys after that one another day again i think on saturday very early in the morning somebody just called me out of the blues i check and uh, true color the person's name is boma x or something i say hey who is this one so normally when people call me like that normally i don't pick strange numbers but because of the way my eldest brother died you know um it just made me when people call me i want to pick though when i pick i won't say anything i would just want you to talk first so i will know if the person is a familiar person so i picked the call and i kept quiet and the person was like hi eh, i need an apartment to short let now 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 i'm like jesus christ i said sorry apartment not available and i ended the call i'm like why are all these smart people coming to come and tell me you want apartment now 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 like what the heck is going on guys oh so yesterday this ayo guy called me i think on sunday he called me on sunday early in the morning i think about 9 9 a.m and he called me again i said eh, sister sorry and eh, that day i called you and eh, i just want to tell you that we still need the apartment blah 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 and i'm like okay you still need the apartment can you give me an actual date he now said now i said how many times how many times have i told you stop telling me the apartment now I mean, I have other businesses that I deal with. You can't just call me out of the blues and tell me you need an apartment like now. You know, I have other things to deal with. So I said, okay, this is what we are going to do. I can consider your request and say, okay, let's do the viewing, the inspection by 12. If you can show up by 12, tell your clients or guests, whatever. He even said he's an agent though. I said, okay, no wahala. He said, you'll get back to me. Dude did not get back to me. Then 12 on the dot, he calls me up and says that is already on his way to the apartment and he is there i said i'm sorry that apartment is not available i told you to let me know if 12 was convenient for you instead you took yourself to the apartment how would you just go to that apartment how and that was how i cancelled that one now guys the mistake i made in all of this was i gave the address of the apartment to the guy i was initially that's the john i was initially having conversations with right so yesterday this is where the old wahala now escalated 
the john himself called me very early in the morning and then he said that his client is coming he has a client that wants to stay for three days no he first said two days then now said the client wants to stay th- he said two days i said okay when does the client want to move in he said this evening the client is coming from outside lagos and no not outside lagos think um far 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 away on the mainland you know those far areas of lagos so the client is coming all the way from there and the client is doesn't know when the person will get to the island and then i'm like okay when this person gets to the island let me know so that i will fashion that into my time and then he said okay later he called me again not up to one hour oh sorry i have another client this one is different i said i got you first i don't understand what are you how come you have so many so many clients he said hey, you know i'm an agent this is what i do when people are looking for places to stay i'm always i say i understand the job of an agent i am also an agent partially you know but how come you have so many clients at every flip second you have a client you have a client he said i'm sorry yo. i normally have my own um short letter apartments but it's all occupied for now i'm like okay so where is your client he said oh they're already they are going to meet you in 30 minutes I said, okay let me go and see this client guys this was another bloody mistake i made i decided to go and see this client so when i got to the apartment i met about four young boys in their early 20s so um i was asking like so who wants to stay in the apartment one of them said all of us and i'm like all of you why your agent said it's just one person and he said eh, no it's all of us we are five i'm like you're five so immediately i called this guy and i said why am i seeing five people you told me you have a client that wants to stay in the apartment and he said oh sorry it's five of them that wants to stay there and i'm like yeah hey, okay oh. so i said okay this is what's gonna happen only one person will come into the apartment to do inspection every other person should wait outside the gate and they were now saying that no ah, let's come together now another one was not saying no i want to come with one of my friends i said no i'm sorry for security reasons just one person so i called the security guy plus this one and this one that now came inside with me said his name is ayo midi abi what so i said oh so you are the ayo that i've been talking to okay so me this ayo guy and the security guy and then there's a plumber around the plumber was, was around to do some fixtures in the house so we went into the apartment i showed him around the apartment and then i asked him um are you okay with this space he said yes no issues at all i said okay now Again, I am. Um, I now called the John in front of him. I said, um, John, your client is here. He said he likes this place. So the John now asks, Oh, is he going to take it? I asked the guy, Are you, are you going to take it? He said, Yes. I said, Okay. The John now said, Okay, don't worry. I'm going to talk about the rest transaction with him. I said, Okay, are you go and have your conversations with him? I'm going to just do one or two finishing touches in the apartment and then you can, I'll call you when it's ready and when all is sorted out. This guy went outside. So I was having a very, very weird feeling about this whole thing. My spirit was not just gelling at all because number one, the outlook of the guys. Guys, I understand that it's not good to judge people by their appearance, but these boys, they were looking so young. They didn't have any luggage. Normally, when I have guests at my apartment, when they come, they are always carrying luggages. They are always very prepared like they are travelers or something, you know, or maybe they want to come and do a weekend getaway or something like that. So these ones, they didn't have any luggage at all the only thing they had was their phone that was it so guys the first thing that came to my mind was this boys they are yahoo yahoo boys probably just looking for a hideout to do something number two it's not these people they are criminals probably just looking for a hideout you know to do whatever they want to do or they into just one shady business guys i said having goosebumps again the alarm bell in my head started ringing i had to call my friend that owns the space and i told him that hey, this is how i'm feeling you know that this whole deal i don't understand and he was not around so he was just like look i trust your judgment um you are the eyes over there you are the one seeing what i'm seeing just call off the deal because if your instincts are doing you like that call off the deal so immediately i called the john and i said i'm sorry the owner of the space wants to use the apartment so he said he can't let out the apartment at this point in time so please the deal is off kindly call your clients and tell them the deal is off if you've collected money from them please give them back their money and let them go and i say oh that's really sad okay no wahala guys 
in my head that was the end i went back into the apartment i was laying beds i was doing things going about before i knew it security man was calling me madam these boys they don't want to go they are saying they want to enter the compound i said why did they want to enter the compound i don't have any business with them anymore they said eh, they said they have paid you money that you don't want to allow them to stay inside the place that they have paid i said pay what so i went downstairs and i was inside the compound they were outside the gates and i'm like please what's going on here and they said eh, um, we have paid money to the guy the guy said that uh eh, where he has not seen the money i said so how am i involved in this they said and eh, because you are his partner you are his business partner you are the third party but you're not the one that said we should go and pay to him but you're not the... i said okay hold hold on slow your roll i don't understand what are you talking about because i'm completely lost here one of the boys guys they are now like five or six so one of them now said and eh, why is she why is she acting dumb why is she acting though? Hey, you go enter trouble today. You don't collect our money, go chop a bee. And I'm like, hey, God, what the hell is going on? This is like a nightmare. I said, okay, guys, calm down. Number one, I am just an apartment host. Number two, your agent, whom you've been dealing with from God knows where, called me up for an apartment. And this is me providing my apartment. But unfortunately, the deal is off. So if you have any dealings with him, you've paid money or whatever, go and talk to him. One of them was like, the one that came to inspect said, Hey, but you said I should go and complete transaction to, with him. You said I should go and pay him money. I said, guy, look my face properly. Have you seen me before? I don't bloody know you. Go and sort out your differences with whoever you paid your money to. I don't know what you're talking, what you're talking about. The deal is off. And then I called that guy in front of them. I put it on speaker. I said, John, please tell your clients to leave my gate. I don't know what they are talking about. Tell them to leave. Go and sort them out. He said, don't worry. I'm talking to them. And blah, 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 blah. Guys, I went back upstairs. These guys, guys who cut long story short, these boys did not leave that gate. Too. They stayed at the gate. They kept on disturbing. They were making noise. They were just restless and all of that. Guys, I was already shaking. I was calling my friend. I was like, look at what is happening. Look at what is happening. What's going on? These guys, I'm suspecting. I knew it. I knew there was something fishy all along. So I called and thankfully, guys, this young guy, my fear was that it was all it was all a scam. But thankfully, this guy's phone number was on. So I kept on calling and disturbing him. I said, listen, if your boys do not leave that gate, I'm gonna call the police on them. I don't know what you guys are on about. Call them away from my property. I just had to say my property, not my house, shall so the guy was like ah, i'm sorry you ah, i've told them to leave that place he now said oh that what happened was he has another sub agent that works under him they paid money fifty five thousand to his sub agent his sub agent says he has not gotten a lot of the money when he gets a lot of the money he's going to refund them back the money but for now he has not gotten a lot so in my head i'm thinking that okay i understand how bank transactions can be in nigeria sometimes you do a transfer to somebody you don't get the alerts till maybe the next day i understand i said okay all these things you're explaining to me go and explain it to these boys i just wanted to live here because this estate is very quiet so the moment they start making a lot of trouble people will start wondering what's going on i, I don't want that to happen he said hey, madam don't worry i'll sort it out guys this matter was not sorted out though these boys were outside the gate and me i wanted to go back home because i had a, a photo shoot a product shoot to do my cinematographer friend was telling me he was going to call me back in 30 minutes we should do he was bringing all his equipment i had a lot of things to do that yesterday hmm. guys this thing did not die down no i did uber uber got around I went outside the gates. I was just praying my mind. I said, Jesus, help me to get into that car safely. Help me to get into the car safely. I entered the car and one of the boys came to the window. I was knocking on the window. Madam, I want to talk to you. I said, I just did like this. I don't want to talk to you. He was now shouting. This guy don't chop our money. Oh. She don't carry our money. Our money run, no. I told the Java, 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 just go, just go. Guys, to cut long story short, these boys refused to go. Before I knew it, my security man kept on calling me back to back. And then he called me later and said, oh, these boys, they went to go and bring SSS. I say SSS, okay, tell them that me too. I want to call my own uniformed policeman. I now called a friend of mine who is a big person. I say, ah, that this is what is happening now. Do you have any, you know, law enforcement person I could use? And then he said, you know what? I won't advise you to involve the police because when listening to the entire story the mistake you made was even taking one of them inside the apartment to inspect in the first place the time you saw that it was supposed to be one client turned five you should have just called off the deal at that point but it's not your fault so he said do not allow this thing to get to the police station because if it gets to the police station they will call you an accomplice and i'm like hey jesus christ i don't die guys 
this matter did not end so he told me continue disturbing this john guy so that he will refund back this boy's money if he does not refund the money then it means people have to go to the police so just continuously disturb this guy so guys before i knew it my security man called me again he said madam they want to do uber and carry me go they said they want to carry me go because i am a witness i saw when this boy came to come and check apartment i said jesus christ what is going on before i knew it they called the manager of the property the entire property manager came i was now talking to the manager back to back back to back they say and eh, they want me to be present i said why should i be present i am not coming there those boys look scary i don't know what their motives are i don't even know what they want to do they say eh, sorry ma you have to just come this is that, that hey guys i was shaking i even caught cold in the process my temperature was high my bp was high i was weak i was sick i had not eaten i had not showered i was just crazy my day was totally disorganized everything i wanted to do was done like everything was in a standstill i even ironed the clothes i wanted to use for my photo shoot i could not use anyone i was just weak at the end of the day i now called the john guy and i used my second phone to record our conversation so recording our conversation, I asked him questions because I wanted him to confirm that I, I wasn't a part of it. Because those guys, every time I call people over there, the, the only thing I'm hearing is that lady, now she carry our money. She's the one that took the money. She's an accomplice. She's a third leg. You know, that kind of thing. So I wanted to clear my name. I now called this guy. I put it on speaker and I used my second phone to record the conversation because my phone does not have a phone recorder. And then the, I asked the guy, I said, John, I don't understand what is going on. Am I a part of this? He said, no, I'm sorry, glory boy, you're not supposed to be a part of this. I said, good. Secondly, did you give me any money? Because these guys are claiming to have given me money. And he said, no, you did not give them any money. So I said, okay, can you at least call them and tell them that you did not give me any money, that I don't have anything. He said, I'm sorry, you're not supposed to be a part of it. This deal is supposed to be between me and these boys. We've told them that we'll send them a video or a screenshot of our bank transactions so that they will see that we have not received any money. But they don't just want to make trouble. Guys, what I did was, after that call, I sent, I called the property manager. I told him to send me his own WhatsApp number that I wanted to send him a recording. So I sent that recording to him. Guys, it was that recording that I sent to him. He now played the recording to the hearing of the SSS, if they had any, to the hearing of the SSS and the other boys there. They now listened to it. So that was when they now understood that, okay, for reals, I wasn't a part of the whole thing. Because they were insinuating that I knew the Muhammad. Both of us planned the whole thing together, blah, blah, blah. So from the recording they listened to, they now realize that, oh, that I don't even know the Mohammed. So they were now saying that, and the thing is, can I look for a way for the Mohammed to come all the way from the mainland where he is to the island? I see, Oga, oh it is not in my place to do that because I don't know this person. I don't know these people. Let them go and sort it out themselves, you know? Guys, at the end of the deal, in my house, I was talking to my friend. I was praying to God. I said, God, can these people's money just materialize so that I will have peace of mind because my day is already shattered. Guys, I'm talking to you people. This thing was still going on till about 5 p.m. in the evening. This thing started from like 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. 5 p.m. in the evening, we were still on the phone talking back to back. So, finally, this John guy now called me and said, um, Sorry, you are that my agent just received the alert on his phone. He just received the money in his account. I said, Thank you, Jesus. I said, Do me a favor. Tell him when he pays the money back, he should send me a screenshot of the money leaving his account, eh, of his bank notifications on his SMS, and then he should also send me a screenshot of the receipt so that I can also send it to the property manager, let them see it and know that this whole thing is done. Guys, that was how this guy sent the deals. I called the property manager immediately and I told him right there and then, God, that, that like God, it's as if all these bank networks that happens that you don't receive alerts on time, these guys received their alerts instantly. I saw the receipt, I saw the money, and then everything was sorted out and they left. Guys, that was when I started. I, I almost, I was just crying. I said, God, what the hell just happened today? It was later and I sat that I was not calculating two and two together. I was having a conversation with my friend. And I was like, first of all, this John guy said that these people paid him 55,000 Naira. How come from the transaction, I'm seeing 110,000 Naira. Also, this John guy, because he's an agent, he was telling me when we started having this conversation that, oh, my apartment is really affordable. 
that what he wants to do is he wants to inflate the price a bit so that he is going to get his own commission since i'm not paying him any commission i said look whatever you want to do i don't i don't care i don't i don't want to be involved in whatever you want to do my own is as a company we have our own standard rates and this is the rate we are doing no more no less you know so i was expecting that if these guys are going to pay him money for three nights they were going to pay him 150,000 naira. But what I saw in the receipt was 110,000 naira. That was I me mean, and my friend were just calculating that this thing was actually a dupe. Because at the end of the day, what they were expecting was I was going to be scared. I was going to chicken out of the whole situation. And I was going to say, okay, well, for things not to escalate, well, let me just pay them the 55,000 naira. You know? But then, how come they paid 110,000 naira for three nights? You know, it doesn't really make sense. So guys, your thing was just shady. I sat down, guys. I was just thinking about my life. I said, Glory, this is a huge lesson. Never again will I have a deal with anybody that wants to come and stay in that apartment without seeing the person first. Agent or whoever you are, I'm going to see you face to face. Whether you're in Kafancha, whether you're in Guadalada, you have to come to this Lagos. Let me see your face. Because guys, yesterday, I was so scared. I was just asking myself, what if? what if what if they carried or abducted the security guy it means one way or the other i have to show my face and i don't know what would have happened at the end of the day what if out of pressure i showed up at that place and they abducted me guys <laughs> i want to see money go bail myself oh god it was so crazy guys like i i learned a huge lesson yesterday i learned a huge lesson i just told myself never again never again me sharp sharp i have blocked all those all those baggers like i have blocked all of them so don't ever contact me i don't want that kind of shady deals anymore guys i literally blocked all of them because yesterday was one of the scariest days of my life i've gone through worse days but yesterday was double worse because i just i was just thinking of the eventualities what would have happened what would have happened guys i'm glad all is well now i'm glad i am good but it was just a deal that taught me a bitter bitter lesson that's it guys i just thought i should share my sordid ordeal of yesterday with you guys um let me know what you think in the comment section below i'll see you guys in tonight's video have a nice day